Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of my wonderful interviews. Now you may remember just before Christmas, I think it was early, early December, I uh, had a very nice gentleman pop in who uh, we gave a good book giveaway. And this was uh, Gary Fraun's book of put a st uh, putting a stopper in the bottle of death and also his other one, putting a stopper in the bottle of numbers. numbers. There we are. And he is actually sitting next to me here in the studio for a return visit, which is absolutely fantastic. By popular demand, I have to say. People were saying, we loved having you in the studio. We love listening to you with your very revealing books. And I know you're, you're working on another book, um, which hopefully will be out relatively soon. About a month and a bit, yeah. Which yeah, I keep saying a month. and it, it, the, the books write themselves, really. But do, do I've, they? I've had great fun over those two with the amount of people that purchased and we gave away and and people have found all sorts of the stuff that's in there but, but uh, there's five secrets in each book and and uh, you found the first secret in book one which is on page 33 oh there they are it's giving it away it's one of their numbers and then that led to somebody breaking the codes of that one and they ended up with a bitcoin so because uh, i've done this stuff not for money i've done this stuff to create good energy yeah so that was that was great fun um but book two people are discovering stuff in there now so it's 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 yeah it's been really really good fun and um i've had some fantastic emails from people and people have got me down other rabbit holes as well so oh well, that's so they're that's sharing really good. so yeah we're all kind of it's about working together isn't it it's yes. about us all doing our our heavy lifting in our own particular ways and helping each other and well, I know that uh, people were saying to me, because there were only a limited number of books that we could actually give away, they were saying, oh, um, I've been on an online bookstore, famous online bookstore. We don't other, need to, other products are available. Other products, yeah, we don't need to mention them. But they said, oh, it's run out. What do we do? Is it still the case that they uh, are unavailable? Or they... Yeah, on there. I, I, I want to move away from them because I don't really need them now. Um, I've created enough interest um, um, for people to, to, to come direct, which is garyfraun.co.uk. Um, we'll put the link in the yeah, description, so, of course. So that's lovely. And book three is is going to be is going to knock these two into into a hat because um, I'm writing about the New World Order. I'm writing about the Illuminati when they started the origins with WhatsApp and uh, and the banking system and the banking families and and I've got it year by year. I'm, I, I've 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 reference wise in terms of our history i've kind of put it year by year and what was happening year by year and and this goes right back this goes right back. i mean it's, it's yeah. i mean this yeah. is the thing that i find even though people tell me like yourself you tell me and you just think people have had this vision of what they wanted to do in the future and they've planned these steps and it just seems absolutely mad well like, it's a knight's nice templar it's all about money it's all about gold and and it's all about war and um and but when you recognize what they're up to and you can figure it out and you've got their rule book then yes. then it kind of they, they start stumbling in the dark so I, I mean in in book one i must have read at least 400 books plus an equal amount of of articles um and then there's the ones that i've read that aren't going in the book yes. so you've got to read the ones as you've got to read you just got to do the reading well i was going to say you must uh, i mean you've seen my house downstairs yeah, yeah. i've got a fair number but you, you must have loads of books and you're going whittling through uh, you you told me before we started recording that uh, you try to read three books a month a, a week a week oh a week blimey how yeah. do you do that because you work as well yeah yeah i've, I've got a, i was at a survey this morning that's why i was late coming <laughs> here so uh, i was i was i was um i was late on that one because i found an issue so it is hard work. It is hard work, but you know, not having a, a TV. Yes, I have a TV, but only for um, YouTube. And I haven't. Right. I don't. I don't, I don't. The only TV I've got. I mean, I have a, a monitor on my on my computer, but I we, you can't see this lovely view. But in front of us, there's a, a a big TV left over by my daughter. Funnily enough, before she went to New Zealand, and I use it purely as a monitor in the studio, so that as I mix the cameras around, I can see where they're going. But um, I don't have a television. And the thing about not having a television is you, you just don't, can't believe how much time you gain. Awful. And, and the mobile phones, I'm, I'm moving away from my mobile, so, so I'm spending less and less time on the mobile. And, um, and it just frees me up yeah. for all the other stuff that I'm doing. I, I mean, one of the things, apart from reading, that I do, and the audience probably knows this now, is that I spend quite a lot of time in the kitchen with my fire burning range my wood burning range um and just enjoying not doing very much 
instead of being distracted all the time. So I'm using my own thoughts to, because I, I interview people all the time. And so, you know, you'll go away and then I'll perhaps this evening, I'll be sitting there thinking about things you said, things that I didn't know I'd taken in at the time. They go, oh yeah, Gary mentioned this. Then that might send me off on a journey somewhere. Well, I, I, I'm going right back in book three to the thousand points of light, you know, which is biblical as well. And um, the thousand, what's that? The thousand, thousand points, points of light. light. Oh, all the presidents were, were mentioning it, which is um, <clears throat> it's a Mason term, a Freemason term, um, for the the light bringers or the, the the fallen angels, as it were, right within Masonry itself. And don't forget, we've just had <clears throat> Elon Musk has been putting up a load of stuff, didn't they? And biblically, the thousand points of light is the end. Oh, blind. And, uh, so, are we he, reaching the end then? Um, I think it's about energy. I think if we, we, we need to we need to be positive about it all. Yeah. Because of the negativity you can get drawn into it. Absolutely. But if you know if you know the rule book and you're kind of understanding the times that we're in, you know, a thousand points of light, Elon Musk just put up the Starlink and the mm. first one first lot he put up were a thousand. So is he on our side? What do I know? <laughs> yeah, the older I get, the less I know. Well, That's about where I'm at, you know. Um but but when you start cracking the codes, then then at least you you've got a chance. Yes. you know you've got a chance of seeing this stuff, which is um, which then brings us back to to book book um, book two because something we've got this this thing, and, and this is book two by the way. We we got um we got a a, a a thing going on now in the Middle East. You know we're sending troops there, we're sending ships there, we're we're, we're lining stuff up. But there was something I I discovered on the Economist map because. The highbrow end of these people, they, they do it at different levels. So for the lump of proletariat, it's in the TV shows and in the movies and yes. all that sort of stuff. And like in the Matrix, all the all the reg numbers are all biblical um, passages from the Bible. And But for the, the highbrow people, it's The Economist magazine. They communicate through that. Right, because they're and, all reading it. Yeah, because they're all, all reading it. And, and there's one particular one that, that jumped out at me. And then now I've realised they're a little bit behind on their programme, but it was the... It was the Economist magazine from 2019. So there was something. So something in the Economist. I mean, the, the other thing is your, your everyday person doesn't read that, so they would not even, no. see, even though it might be hidden within the Economist magazine, ordinary people are not going to see it anyway. And even if they saw it, they would glance over it because they wouldn't understand what they're seeing. Is, is well, it's even... understanding their coding because if you if you look at the magazine, it says the world, and then 2020, and it's red on green which we've, is... we've got it on on here actually so let's have a little look at what you're oh, okay. referring to so this was on this was on the cover was it this was on the cover um of, of, um of the end of 2019 right and i then started looking down into it with with um you know you've got 11 lines and it looks like an eye examination yeah and like most things with eye examinations it's about it's about being able to you've got vision in red written as well so that's quite interesting on the third line up Oh yes, just yes. Yeah, that's you, actually, they can't see my mouse. So, um, but uh, as you say, as you say, third line up. Um, and in fact, what I can do is, if I remember how to do this, if I manipulate the image just a bit, and have a look, you can probably see that clearer on your screen. And the second line up from the bottom, if you go along, um, you've got the I and then a Y, and then you've got an R and an A and then a T and then an N. Well, that's that's Iran. And at the end of that line. It says war. It certainly does. So this is how they code things. Yeah, they and code hide things. Them. Yeah, yeah. But the Economist. I've done quite a few um, talks on the Economist over the years, um, so I keep a, a, a keen eye on that. Um, but the the other thing that's come up is, I'm, as I mentioned in book two on page fifty four. Fifty fifty four. Yeah, I've got um, World War One began on the twenty eighth of the seventh. 1914 well if you add up um uh, 28 7 19 14 that adds up to 68 world war Two began on the first of the ninth 1939 well one plus nine plus 19 plus 39 is 68 so 68 seems to be a significant number then. invasion of ukraine began on the 24th of the second 2022 24 plus 2 20 22 is 68 Right. Okay. Okay. So, given that that that's their power numbers, and given the stuff that's going on now in the Middle East, um, 
I don't want to be a man of prediction, but I think we need to be aware of the dates. Yes. So the end of this month, the only the, the, the 68 I found was 21st of the 3rd, 2024. Because um, 21 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 is 4 is 68. So, and then the, the next date along, which would be March, is 24th of the, 24th of the 4th, 2024. And that's 68. So, so 21st of the 3rd and 24th of the 4th. So, uh, so Mar March and April are months to look out for in the early 20s then? Yeah. For something dramatic to happen? Yeah. Con uh, concerning us or concerning the world? Well, I think I think if if this war does kick off, and it's a banker's war, isn't it? It's about money. It's about um, it's about controlling the world's oil with what's going on in the Middle East. Mm. Um, yeah, we're, we're we're I'm very positive. You know, I I think I think it's a good thing because we recognise these things now and we can work these things out. And so, when you throw it out in the universe and you say, no, I'm not. I don't want that. I don't want that. And I know what the date they're working with and because they work with 68 with war um but then when you understand how <coughs> the money system has reached the end of its days mm. with this digital stuff but you need to go back to to like the Bretton Woods agreement um I don't know if you know about that um tell it to, yeah no for those that don't do well the and, end of the and end ignorant of, people like myself yeah well I've gone back with the bankers all the way back to um Rome and 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 um and uh and World War Two. And what was really going on behind the scenes, you know, where did Hitler get his funding from? Mm. All this sort, because he built one of the biggest standing armies in four years. Well, you you That's... don't from from a broken country, you don't you don't yeah. really get to do that after the Treaty of Versailles and World War One. No, exactly. So, but when you start to understand, it's all about um, transition of banking and making money out of war. And then you start to realise what's what's going on because when with, with the Bretton Woods Agreement, it was that the gold would be attached. To gold at thirty at thirty two dollars an ounce. Gold would hang on. Gold would be attached to gold. Uh, go, dollars would be attached Do, to yeah, gold. Right. And so the, the the world currency became the dollar. That's when the dollar really started to become a thing. Yes. But they the, there was two conditions on the Bretton Woods: is that that the Americans wouldn't overprint money, and the second one was always attached to gold. Well, Nixon um, in nineteen seventy one took took America out of the Bretton Woods. And then the following year, gold was sixty-eight dollars an ounce, and then it was ninety dollars an ounce the year after that. So that's when the fiscal ease or the money printing really started, and the dollar started to devalue. Well, yes. the, the dollar's only worth one point two cents of what it was worth in nineteen thirty-three. It was a hundred cents to a dollar. Right. So it's over. The the the, the, the American dollar is over. So they have to go digital because there's there it, because the way money's printed by the Federal Reserve, which is a private private bank as is bank of england bank of england yeah um when they started printing uh, their money um it it, it just it was a ponzi scheme from then from, on it. right and and so they they have to move away from it because there, there is not enough print if you attach the debt um to it and add it up there is not enough printed notes to pay off just the debt crikey so it, this is imminent. Yeah, effectively. We're, we're yeah. In it. I we're mean, in we it. keep hearing it and no, no, hearing we're in it, it, but we're, we're in, in it now. Because and that's why that's what's going on in the Middle East is that they they want the petro. I mean, you've only got to look at America. They went in with Gaddafi and they went in with um, um, Saddam. Saddam, you know, because they were attaching oil. Yes. Oil for food, they called it, but they attached oil to gold. They were creating their own dinar, and the the World Bank couldn't have that. No. So they took those two out. And Iran's the same because Iran is is selling their oil for gold, right? And the Americans can't have that. So what do we? So, so what do we do? Um, I mean, as ordinary everyday people who um, may not understand all the nuances of what you've just said, um, we uh, there seems to be a huge pushback against central bank digital currencies for the, I mean, for the main fact that it's programmable and can interfere with your life and prevent you buying the things that you want. Well, you've got to be careful with the words. It's private central bank. You can have a central bank of a nation, right? But a private central bank—that's a different. That's a whole different. Oh, I see. So, it, I mean, would it be private central bank? Well, the, F, Every, the, the, uh, the um the uh, Federal Reserve is the Bank of England is. It's, they're all private. Yes. Um, because they did de they deal in offshore accounts, and us poor people have to deal with the inland revenue. Yes. 
<clears throat> so they're banking maritime admiralty terms. We can, it's funny, isn't it? You come back to that admiralty yeah. law yeah, yeah. every time, don't you? Yeah. That's really interesting. So um, what about gold and silver then? If, we, if we're coming to the end of the banks and people have got money in the bank and they're worried about it and they don't want to go to a private central bank digital currency and all of that nonsense, uh, is are people advised, do you think, to buy... Not that I'm saying that this is advising anybody to do anything. Exactly, of we're not financial advisors. Um, but is it advantageous to have some um, amount of gold or silver? Do you think? I think it's advisable if you can. I mean, a lot of people can't afford such stuff. No. Um, I, I. The other thing you've got to be aware of with gold is gold is attached to um, capital gains tax, and anything more than ten thousand pounds, you'll get a bill because if you do buy bulk gold, they put you on a list in right. the UK. So they know who you are, where you are, and how much you bought. Oh, I see. So if, so if gold becomes worth four times its value, so a, a, an average sovereign has always bought you a decent suit. Well, if that sovereign goes from 100 or 190 quid or 210 quid, it, it goes up three times its value. That gold, that that that's, that coin is then 800,000 pounds. Well, you can't fill your car up with fuel for 1,000 pounds. It's... Yeah, but so they won't have the change. Yeah, and and but it's linked to capital gains. But there's no VAT, whereas silver is not linked to capital gains, but you pay the VAT up front. So once it's you've paid for it, it's yours. Right. Oh, I see. Even though that it's just a precious metal, hmm. the, the, I, I don't really understand why the capital gains would be. Uh, but it's because it's gay, the, it, it, gathering it, value. It, it means that the government uh, can can basically link it to legal tender. And call gold in and say it's illegal right. to hold it. They're not, not nice people, silver. are they? At the end of the day, these, <coughs> they're these, interesting. They're they? interesting people who have uh, not necessarily, uh, as I've said so many times, our best interests at heart. No, um, no. And 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 that becomes more and more obvious with it. I mean, it's, it's going back to the war th um, thing. I mean, we've started to see trickling into the news now, and I don't watch the news. And conscription. So, so in, inscription. Con conscription. Conscription, not yeah. inscription. Yeah, exactly. Inscription would be all right. Because what they're doing, they, they said, yeah, in 10 years' time. No, 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 no. They're intending to do it a lot sooner, but they want it in the consciousness out there. So yes. conscri conscription, children are saying, what's that mean, Daddy or Mummy? Yes. And it's like, oh, well, it means you have to pick up a gun, travel the world, meet new people and kill them. Or get killed yourself. Or get killed yourself. Which sort of adds into um, the depopulation concept that people are talking about as well. Yeah. So, but it's it's about us though looking at it as, as a positive. Yeah. Well, you know, that's it. I mean, there we are talking about well, where is the positive in all of that, well, Gary? Yeah. Well, the positive is we know what they're up to and we know what they they're intending to do. So and we call it out. We call it out. And does that does that scupper their plans? Well, they, they call it revelation of the method, don't they? Do they? Yeah. Revela I like that. Revelation of the yeah, method. Yeah, it's, it's that they have to tell us what they're, they're intending to do. Is yes. It? Because they, they can say to the universe, we told them. We told them. So, in other words, our job then is to rebut that. Yeah. And say, we don't want that. Yeah. Thank you very much. So then they can't do it. Is well, that they, Yeah, they're not entitled to do it then. Right. They have to back off. And The Economist it's... magazine, I've had great fun with that because I've exposed quite a lot quite a lot of stuff and yes. things don't pan out so being a man of prediction with these dates for me is kind of like if you get it right you're part of the them yes I, that's what I get thrown at me oh do oh yeah, I see yeah, yeah. so and then yeah. if you get it wrong it's like yeah, he's talking a load of tosh and he's trying to put you off the scent yeah, or yeah. He's, a, he's a shill uh, or a controlled it, opposition or something yeah like that. Uh, uh, well they call it a um, change agent oh yeah. I, yeah I haven't heard that yeah term. a change agent yeah so uh, but all I do is I, I just show that there is a different existence that we're in yes and it is about vibration it is about energy it is about recogn recognition it is about words it is about numbers um but you just gotta when you understand when you kind of you get the rule book yes when they do stuff like this you see it straight away you don't have a lot of time then to write your next book which will help people push back on some of this stuff well i i, I work late i get up early <laughs> So, um, you know, I've got, someone's got to do it. Someone's got to do it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'd like peace and quiet if I could and just sit down with books and read them for pleasure. But I'm reading. You're on a mission. Another, yeah, I'm yeah. on a mission from God. Yeah. So uh, what, what other things are you finding from your reading and numbers that we can push back against and hopefully sort of present, prevent from coming into fruition? Well, when you start to, uh, uh, there was a game produced by Steve Jackson in 1981 called The Illuminati. I mean, they, they put it out there, don't they? 
and I've I've written a whole chapter on on their cards and and predictions because in there it's got nine eleven, it's got the Pentagon attacks, it's got quarantine, it's got it's all in there. It's in the right. game. Oh blimey! So, uh, but they have fun with this stuff. You see, they yes. think it's they think it's they think it's funny. Yes, um, as soon as they've got to amuse themselves in some way, and, well, they, and and the fact that most people don't see it is is quite interesting. They to don't them. work like us. No, you know they got loads of time on their hands. You you were telling me um, that you're well. I don't know whether you want me to mention this or not, but you were telling me that there's interesting things that people can find out with their fingerprints. Yeah, the talk in Glastonbury. I'm going to go over it because I think I think I've discovered something. I started talking about Schumann resonance in, in the last AV that I did, and that there's energy in the air and grounding and all the science behind it. So I proved that, um, and I proved you can take electricity from the air. And then I found these things in the floors of cathedrals. Um, which are Schumann resonance devices. So just for those people who've tuned in and don't know what the Schumann resonance is, can you just tell us the what The Schumann resonance is? machines are energy machines. You know, like you throw your mobile onto a charger and it will just charge it up without yes. connecting. And But it, they can discharge as well. So they can deliver energy and take energy away. Well, I found these things in churches. And then I uh, had a chat with a couple of friends of mine who are healers. And um, they, they've got those patterns in their fingerprints. So you're saying that these... I haven't got them for, for healers. Right, for, for healers. So you can look at somebody's fingerprints and the patterns that yeah. that reveal that you, you have healing properties... That's right. ...can be identified in your finger, right. in the patterns of your, um, so thumb, like, your fingerprint. With the ones I've looked at, someone's got like two on one hand and three on the other, or one on one hand, four on the other, and, but the patterns are there. They're there. Right. But it means, it means, is there a potential discovery of someone's future? Yeah. So if you're looking at a young child... You, you know if it's a healer you know a or healer. an artist or a, wow. or a psychopath, maybe. That's very interesting. So I'm, I'm yeah. chasing that one down at the moment. Gosh. I mean, we're in, a, we're in a, such a discovery age, aren't we? I mean, and I say discovery age because so much of this stuff has been discovered 100 years ago and then buried. Yeah. yeah. Our, our history has been... is deceit. So I'm, I'm kind of rewriting... Are no known history. Yeah, you know what in the background what's been going on. So, do you, are you um, concerned that uh, maybe they don't want you to do this and that they come after you? Uh, I've had I've had an incident. <laughs> I've had an incident. Are you able to talk about it? Or well, I I ended up in the ECU. I had pancreatic failure because of it, and I was in there for two months. So it was what was that with a poisoning incident? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I've 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 but I I don't care. And then there's another unwritten rule I, I had someone tell me that um that if they do attempt at you um and they cut and it doesn't happen then you enter what they call the um Rasputin club oh right which means they can't do it they again. can't do it now harry rhodes tells a story a similar where he was i think um he was tried to be knocked off the road in a, in a car and it failed because he's actually a um quite a good driver and he, an advanced driver, he'd done an advanced driver course, and he managed to sort of get out of this. And he says that that he said exactly the same that having them tried once on your life, that's it. They have to leave you alone. Yeah, well, it was interesting for me because I, I spent. I was in Red Hill Hospital and Brighton Hospital, and I was moved from Brighton. The incident happened. I was, I rushed to Brighton, and then I, I moved closer to home with Red Hill. But I was in the ECU for, for the best part of two weeks. Gosh. So it was, um, yeah, it was, and it was extremely painful. Oh, blimey. Well, I don't uh, fancy any of that. I mean, I've been <laughs> ill recently, but I, and people said, oh, Richard, you, uh, they've been targeting you. They're after you. But actually, I don't think it was, I think it was a lot of just horrible stuff going around. So um, anyway, why would they want to target little old me? I mean, I'm, you know, very simpleton sort of chap. Um, but they don't like us discovering this stuff, you know, yes. because they, they put it out there for us not to discover it. It's more. It's more to sort of uh, stop the karma coming back to them. Is that right? Yeah. Well, yeah. it's it's uh, when you see what they. Well, we had an interesting discussion earlier about about digital books. Yes. And and the moment the Kindle came out, I was I was like, oh no, they, you know, because don't forget, Kindle removed a book from people that purchased it, and the book they removed was 1984. Yeah. So they, they a pulled, significant book. They pulled from the Kindle, so that's why I'm into hard copy books, and yes. you know I don't like um, PDFs. I don't like because they can all be changed. So um, well, I worry about the whole digital thing because of that. It can mm. be changed, um, but the Kindle is important because when the Germans were burning books, information they didn't want the information to go on to the next generation. They just burn everything. Yes, 
Well, what, what, what's a Kindle? Kindle is something you start a fire with. Absolutely. And then Amazon come in, came out with the fire stick. And the fire stick. Yeah, so it's all there for you to see. And these names are not accidental. No. And, uh, and, and when you realise that, you go, oh, my God, yes, it's there in plain sight, as we all say. It's, oh, it's, it's obvious, but we, our brains have been changed that we don't recognise the significance of the names and words of things. But somebody like yourself, who's obviously reprogrammed your brain to be very alert to the names and titles of certain things from certain people will be more alert. Everyone, everyone can do it. Yeah. Everyone can do it. Yeah. It's not, it's not difficult. No, no. It's just that most people don't think that where they just accept everything and go, oh, yeah, Kindle, that sounds nice, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. And, I'll, have, I'll have two of them. Yeah, I'll have two of those. And, and who knows what, uh, what words have been changed in those books. And, I mean, I love buying, getting hold of second-hand copies of old books and, um, and keeping them on my shelf. Maybe I shouldn't be saying that because somebody will be coming along and saying, well, you can't have those copies. Old books printed after 1980 are, are, banned. Or, are a band, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, anything is possible these days. Um, there was something else I was uh, going to go on to the, uh, with the uh, yeah going back to the um, the fingerprints and the these resonant patterns. Presumably, if you can discharge energy and put energy in with this, it can be used like so many things for good or bad. Yeah. it can t- take your energy away. Well, can you imagine if there is something in our fingerprints that identifies, for example, a psychopath mm. as a baby? Yes. Then we've got a problem because morally. What do you do? Do you re-educate, or you just, or do you label them that yeah, you've got the potential to, to yeah. do harm. So therefore, what so, do you? Yeah. yeah. So it's, there's a, a discussion to be had um, mm. on it, but so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But if presumably, those patterns could be sold on things like uh, wallpaper. If if somebody nasty wanted to have a, a low vibration with you and extract your energy, but sell you wallpaper. So you surround your house with this wallpaper, not knowing that actually it's it's taking your energy away. But these these symbols and signs, it's like the, with the, the the people that affect young children begins with a P. Mm. Yeah, um, with the patterns they use, um, it, it's all about patterns. It's all about pattern recognition, and um, we've we've got to stop them. We've got to stop them. I think I've got somebody in the diary um, or at least I've had a conversation with somebody in the diary to talk about sacred geometry which yep. is presumably a similar thing yeah 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 so that would be um, a fascinating conversation because I mean at first when you know doing this job I've had to accept everything that comes in even though some things that come in might be complete nonsense yep. but at the same time you you've got to take it and when I first sort of started to look at this these patterns I just thought well, how is it that a square with a circle or whatever it is can send you energy but that's because our minds are so on a limited bandwidth the way they've wanted us to be and not seen the creativity uh, yeah 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 in fact they use the creativity in a negative way when you know a lot of a lot of us use creativity in a positive way absolutely you mentioned that you were giving a talk in glastonbury yeah um, um and that's in uh, yeah let's give that we? a bit of a promotion march 20 march 25th it's with um I, i'm just doing a full day's talk and i'm going to go over some of this uh, fingerprint stuff and some other bits and pieces that i've found because some of my stuff is really woo woo you know yeah I bet. um but when people realize the way i'm doing it and breaking that, that then then it's good entertainment so yeah so yeah so those tickets are selling fast and then then we've got you on as well Yes, so this is something called the AV14. Yeah, the alternative view. The alternative yeah. view. Now, what I should have done, and well, whilst, whilst I, you talk about it, I'll see if I can find the uh, website. AV Media. So I, I sort of, um, I'm hosting that. It, it was set up by a, a lovely chap called Ian R. Crane, who's no longer with us. And um, um, I kind of made a promise that we'd try and keep the thing going after he he went on to the next great adventure. and But it's in its 14th year and um we had a a very successful one uh last year and and it's just a it's it's kind of a day's therapy really because you're surrounded by you know 150 other um free thinkers and it's called the alternative view because what do we know it's all about different people with different views on things and that's why we have them on so we sort of we visit all sorts Um, yeah we visit all sorts um let me just grab a better screenshot of that there we go 
So you, you, yeah. So a bit like the Glastonbury Symposium, which talks about yeah. sort of unusual events. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So this is this is happening um, on the the twenty fifth, twenty sixth of May. Yeah. And you've got some terrific speakers. Yeah, yeah. We've got some coming. I'm just trying great. to navigate. Well, you're them. the first one we've got up, up, aren't you? And then <laughs> no, I know. And then we've got we got some John. John very Trish kind stuff. of you. <laughs> we've got. Um, We've got, got little old me talking. We've got someone talking about um, the solar system, what's going on, uh, move, movements, planetary movements. Um, uh, yeah, we've got some really good, really good um, speakers. So, yeah, if, if anyone's around the Midlands or fancies a day out with um, with uh, strange individuals such as ourselves, then uh, then come along. Oh, here we go. Is uh, I believe them. Um, you know that character. I do. I, I, yeah, yeah. And like him, he needs a haircut. Um, and where is it? Where is it? It's, it's um, Milton Keynes. The Leonardo Hotel yeah. in Milton Keynes. Yeah. Um, and there we've, it is. There's some. We've kept it quite central because there are other hotels that are cheaper. You know, we try to. Um, who's, that, who's that dodgy looking <laughs> bloke? Yeah, we're trying to. Um, we're trying to make it sort of um, for everyone's budget, if you if you like, because a lot of people don't have a lot of money right now. So we're trying our best to. Um, to keep the costs as low as we can with the renting the space and as you know these things can be quite expensive is there do, do you find that you have had um this problem that a number of people had and we had it with um uh liz phillips with the the great resist that hotels suddenly get um attacked and said oh you can't have this this is extreme uh right or it's it's no um, they've, they've actually welcomed us with open arms oh that's actually. fantastic but they don't they, they, they i got complained at as the compare because they wouldn't take cash you know oh right yeah so that kind of is an issue but all hotels are doing this so it's difficult to find a place that is cheap enough yes effective enough and comfortable enough to 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 so we always we we settle very well you know we we very rarely um got spare oh spare brilliant seats, oh so. well, that's good so yeah so i'm i mean i'm there doing mm. a talk you're there doing a talk and you've got these other fine people doing a talk now of course i'll leave the link in the description so you can check it out and book your tickets which would be great um my my on these sort of things and i was thinking this last year um bookings were coming in for talks and my worry was well Something's going to happen. A great big psyop is going to happen any minute, and these events are not going to happen. And and from what you've been saying earlier with the numbers, um, do you think that, that there are things going to happen this year which will be disruptors? Yeah, well, but but it's about us realizing what these dates are and calling them out, mm. as opposed to just going along. We're calling it riding the wave this AV, because you know we, we you can get swept away with this stuff. You know, and and you say you got to you got to recognise when when there's trouble ahead. Yes, and head it off. You know. And 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 do you think it really makes a difference? I mean, when I know we sp spoke about this, but do you think it makes a difference by being able to say on shows like this and hopefully many others that have got bigger numbers um, that we know? And we'll do it straight down the camera. We know what you're doing. We do know what they're doing. Yeah, and, uh, and they're not pleasant people. No, but and it's it's about war and it's about money. It's about banking. And and war, of course, is we mentioned this before, but it, it's killing people. Yes, and and our taxes are paying to kill people. This is what uh, Chris Coverdale argues about when you're paying your taxes. That of course you are actually helping fund the murder of innocent men, women, and children, and and conscripted troops who may not want to be there anyway. And is that a good idea? And can you have that on your conscience? Well, it's everything is deceit. They've done. I mean, they they call them the infantry for a reason. It's because they can't think for themselves. They're children. Yeah, very, and very then you've true. got you've got the other aspect of to say, you know, in in this country, people don't realise that we've got a royal navy, we've mm. got a royal air force, but we haven't got a royal army. Oh, and it's because the army is always stuck with the people when 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 the king misbehaved. So you have things like the Royal Marines within who yes. are regimental units that have signed up to swear allegiance to the Crown, but others others won't get that recognition by the Crown because they've always stood with the people. Yes. So, yeah, Royal Air Force, Royal Navy, but not Royal Army. So is that um, a reason why we're seeing troops 
being moved out of the country so that should anything happen here, like, I don't know, protests that get out of hand and people who've come over in rubber boats that might suddenly be given some equipment, let's say, as rumours seem to be going around. And of course, I can't say whether this is true or not, but people keep telling me that uh, certain people in hotels being delivered uh, stuff stuff, and, and having, you know, four star treatment and earning £500 a week for just hanging about and waiting to come and, and potentially quell a an uprising of people who say, actually, Mr. Government, we don't like your um, we don't like the cut of your jib at the moment. Um, do you think that that's why the troops have been moved out? Because they couldn't get our boys to, sh let's say, um, fire on their own countrymen. Well, exactly right. Exactly right. And that's why you've got the UN always arriving from other nations to sort out issues because they're not part of the endemic population. Yes. But there's enough of us to say, no, we're not doing this. Well, it's, what is there, 68 million people in this so country? It's, yeah, so it's enough to sort of say, no, we're not doing it. We're yeah. not doing it. We're not doing this. And, and I think but that's worth remembering that, that, again, I mean, I do say it in these shows, there's more of us than them, even if they are armed or they are, and they might not necessarily be armed with body-killing weapons, but they are armed with, and you know, legislation which they throw at us. I mean, I was reading a, <laughs> I was reading a book um, called The Book of Trespass, uh, by Nick Hayes and he, he, he he's basically saying how the countryside is owned pretty much by the wealthy we're only allowed on these very narrow walkways you're not supposed to go over but he said the influence of a sign that says private land people are so indoctrinated to go oh well I won't do anything I'll, I'll I won't go there just a sign you know, there's no wall, there's no barrier, but because it says private sign, and it's it, it may not be private land, but the sign is enough to stop people from sort of going, hang on, this land is ours, isn't it? Who's who's rounded up to say it's private? Who owns it? And where is the authority that they own it from? Well, I, I've, I've written in, in book three um, that the whole environmental movement was based upon land grab because the Americans needed to, 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 to justify the taxes they were demanding off the American people. So the, the Americans basically declared um, um, that you start the environmental movement and then they, they grabbed hold of, you know, uh, the Grand Canyon and large swathes of America um, for the Americans then to start using the resources of those places. Yes. The water and the, you know, so they can sell it. Yes. That's what they were doing. Yes. And, and Britain has done the same in terms of, you know, we everything's been privatised and called corporations own it i had a i, I had a guy off. we put a video out yesterday um of a chap challenging the council but he also was challenging the water board and one of the things he's challenged the water board he says uh, well do you actually own the water you're seeing as it falls from the sky do you actually own it and they wouldn't they couldn't answer that question which i think is an excellent question i mean they might treat the water but they are treating you as if they've invented water or, or created it but well course, i don't use their water I, I filter and do all sorts of water you yes know, and, and clean it up yeah I, I i sort of um yeah i do all sorts of stuff to the water and and i'm not drinking any crap i won't drink anything out of a tap forget it yeah no way no um and well, that's it. I mean, the other thing is that if you uh, they say, well, we've tested the water and it's this, that and the other. But you, even if that bit was true, you haven't tested it at my end. And I don't know the circuitous route that it's travelled and what bits it's, it's picked up en route in wherever it's gone until it reaches my tap. Well, a few years ago, I really upset a lot of people because I basically I, I, I realised um, what was actually going on with our water. And don't forget, when, when in this country we have morgues, don't we? We have morgues. Morgues, yeah. we do have morgues. And yes. they and they fill us with formaldehyde, don't they? When when yes, yeah. Well, where do you think when they oh flush, see when they when they flush the blood out of a human, where does it go? I hadn't thought of that. It goes, into uh, the, that's... Goes, goes into the drains. Yes, and goes to the water board. Nice. So we're basically drinking and people. showering in, in our loved ones. Gosh, there's a thought for you. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah, that was a bit of a shock to some people, that one. I'm sure it was. But, I mean, all of this, you know, we, we, we flush all sorts of stuff away. 
And of course, the women are on the pill. They have that. There's hormonary uh, HRT stuff, and it, it, it's all being taken out of our bodies, or we deliver it out of our bodies, however you politely want to say it. And it ends up down the drains, ends up at the water treatment, and they are only doing the minimum that they need to to, to, to pass their to pass so, yes. so-called tests. Yes. Well, what, what does that mean? And, and are their tests as stringent as the tests that we would have if we are going to have a glass of it? Or a bath of it. Well, when you steam water and you see what comes out, mm. you know, what's left, the residues that are left. Yes. It's horrific. I, I do have a, um, what's the name, what do you call it? A, um, the water steamer, the, yeah, yeah. the, the distiller. The yeah. distiller, yes. Yeah. If only it was a gin distiller, it would be all right. But it's only a water distiller. And yes, and the residue that comes out and you go, blimey, if I had junk, drunk that neat, all of that's in me. Yep. Which is... Um, a bit ghastly uh, but it's heavy we're under attack in every single way but as long as you're aware of it I mean I I try to wear cotton everything yes you know so it's co- a nice cotton co- shirt well, you've got it, on it needed ironing I was I was in a, rush. In a bit of a rush this morning. that's all right um, but yeah so underwear cotton socks cotton um, because these breathable nylons that were, are on our skin mm. it, it's bad for us we shouldn't be wearing this high tech stuff yes you know, no. if you sweat, you sweat, you just wash a T-shirt at the end of the day. Absolutely. But these breathable things and, and all these lycras that women yes, are wearing... Yes, this is probably and, some awful stuff, to be honest, that, I, that I'm wearing. But and Women are in leggings all the time, and it's like, we shouldn't be wearing this stuff. This, I think this is cotton. I'm, um, <laughs> I think and, it is. And wool. Um, I mean, mm. I've got some Harris Tweed jackets, mm. which when I was doing my uh, bald experience, Explorer stuff, landscape, heritage, and nature, wandering through nature, which I desperately want to get back to instead of sitting in all a this. studio with yeah. LED lights and, and screens and all that doing truth stuff. I'd, I'd rather be back out there doing the nature stuff. Time but, will come. Um, but but th- those old natural fibres, wool, cotton, as you say, I mean, they've served us forever mm. and people have been fine with it. And then I'll meet up with friends and they'll say, oh, why are you wearing all that heavy stuff and all that? It's not breathable. Like this. You want this um, technical outfit that's very thin and you have, you know, it's all about these layers and all of this, and they're, which they've spent an absolute fortune. I mean, I know uh, my tweed jacket is a fortune, but I've had that for over 10 years and it's, it's a lovely bit of stuff and it'll probably last me another 10 years. I mean, I've got a red sailing jacket, you know, that's 400 quid, but that's for like when you're out in the wind and the rain mm. at sea. Um, but I try not to wear it because I w- rather wear my Cotton Bell staff jacket, that's right. a wax jacket, um, you know, and that's cotton. Yes. So well, it keeps the rain out. Absolutely. And if you're on a motorbike, it keeps the rain out. Well, so there they, you go. it works. So, yeah. Yeah, I stick to the old stuff. Like, But it's the effect that this modern stuff is doing mm. to the skin. Mm. I mean, uh, um, that's it. very interesting because sometimes I do get very itchy skin. And it's, uh, you know, things are off-gassing or off chemicaling and however you want to describe it. And that can be quite un, uh, unhelpful. And we never used to have all of these this stuff. I mean, we, we are so spoilt with the choice of these things, but the choice actually is pointing you into negative yeah. things than stuff that actually is very useful. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So, yeah, I'm, uh, it's an alternative way of living, isn't it? It's yeah. kind of eating, drinking wearing yes reading it's just a different way yes it i mean it comes back to taking responsibility for yourself and and knowing what it is you're putting into your body and sharing and sharing and sharing yeah Yeah. instead of charging everybody for the the smallest thing all the time Yeah. yeah i think gandhi said um um if you have two coats do not ask who should i give the second coat to ask whose second coat do i have ah interesting yeah yeah well, Gary, um, your books are still available and you're writing a third one. Here we go. Yeah, the third, the third one's going to be exciting for people. I think that's going to, I think particularly for the very young, they can see that how, how this, this, what's been really going on in the background over the years. Yes. And we've exposed them all now and, and they can understand where the Illuminati came from, from the dropout of the Freemasons that they didn't agree with their take on things. Fire Beta Kappa, Skull and Bones, three twenty two. So I kind of I kinda of go where others fear to tread. Yeah. But um but I'm not stopping. No. no. Uh, well and, and that's your third book and you've got a fourth book. Fourth I book. think last time you said you had 
and, and a whole load of range of books. Yeah, I mean, the intention up. is ten. Um, um, but I, I'm finding more and more stuff. I, I'll end up not stopping at all. I'll end up just keep going until this vessel wears out. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, you were very optimistic. I remember yeah. last time, you, and you're still optimistic, yeah. even though we're, you're dealing in, in sort of quite frightening concepts and, and there's a lot that most people would immediately go, oh, my God, I want to sort of crawl up in a ball and hide in a hole. You're... That's, one, that's one option. Yeah. But, but it, 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 when we recognise who these people are and we know who they are now, they've exposed themselves, they've backed themselves into a corner, haven't they, yes. with what they've been doing in recent years. Yes. Uh, we know who they are. We know so there's, they are. there's nowhere for them to run? No. 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 They're in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's been a fantastic conversation, Gary. And I know people will uh, very much enjoy it. They enjoyed the last one. You've got a lot of feedback. Yeah, I, I, I had some wonderful emails from people. And yeah, it's because it's, my emails on the back of the book. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, so it's been, it's, it's been a, a, a really pleasant um, month or so. Excellent. Well, that is uh, that is good news uh, f f from the channel's point of view. Um, thank you so much for coming Pleasure. in and chatting to us. Thank and you if uh, you want any more information, do you have a web page? Uh, GaryFrawm.co.uk. I'll put that in the uh, in the description. I'm but on, anyway. I'm on Facebook as well, but um, I, I dance in there play. I was going to say, that is amazing. Pit. You're on Facebook. I mean... I don't do Facebook. I used to, but I don't. I just stick with. Yeah, the, I like the taunting wanting. them because I use. I'm very skillful with the razor blade words I use, so they can't catch me. Right, um, but I, I do like dancing in their uh, sandbox. Excellent. Well, that's uh, that's it's it's. I mean, I suppose if you take it as a game, yeah, and treat it like Energy. that, you can have yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's our point, isn't it? Yeah. Don't don't be frightened of them. Don't be frightened. Yeah. And and a lot of people, you know, as these things become revealed and I mean, that's what they want, isn't it? You know, the the idea that your loved one will be conscripted to go and fight for people in, in a war that you didn't ask for, you don't understand and you're not getting anything out of it. Um, only the bankers, as you've so rightly said, are the ones who are going to win from all of this. Um, why? Why would you want to? But they'll keep you low. But we call them out, you know, we call yeah. them out for how they've created these things and the bills of exchange and all the things that they've... That's what I'm writing. I'm sort of showing an alternative view at the history that we've been served. And well, then it becomes a book of reference then, doesn't it? Yes. As soon as that book is published, send me, yeah. a, send me a copy yeah, and we'll yeah, yeah. publish... Oh, get, I'll get you back yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We and can, then we, we can have can... some real fun in that one. Absolutely. Brilliant stuff. Gary, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for coming in. I hope uh, you, the lovely viewer, has enjoyed it. I will, of course, be back again with more um, monologues and, of course, wonderful guests such as Gary. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, from Gary and I, thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Namaste. Exactly what he said. <laughs> Until next time, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>